Back at 844 this morning on today's Working Woman, heading back to work during tough economic times. Many moms who opted out of the workforce to raise a family are now focused on re-entering the workforce. Allison O'Kelly is the CEO and founder of MomCorps. Lily Pabian is a mother of three and contractor through Allison's group. And today, contributor Dr. Gail Saltz is an associate professor of psychiatry at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Allison, give me a little bit of, of background on MomCorps. You help connect women, professional women who have left the workforce with basically flexible jobs or contract work. That's right. Yeah, we are a staffing company, but we really focus on moms and focus on finding jobs that work for them in their lives. And is this a good time of year to be out there looking for those jobs? It's a fantastic time. People are done with the summer, both moms who have been busy with their kids and also employers who have been on vacation. So we are finding a lot of moms are going back to work now and a lot of employers are looking to bring them back, especially on a contract basis. Now, Lily, you contacted MomCorps about a year and a half ago. You started by getting jobs through MomCorps. Right. How hard was it, four years out of the workforce for you, how hard was it for you getting back in mentally? Uh, mentally, it was very challenging. Um, just getting myself prepared for interviewing, um, just getting myself ready um, to get out there. Uh, but my husband had lost his job, so it was um, something that we had to do. You had no choice. I had no choice, yeah. So what are women up against, Gail, when it comes to that? I mean, I think so many of them feel like, how am I ever going to fit back in? Exactly. It is the mental preparation that really is usually the hardest thing. and it's, it's the fear of the unknown. Um, which you can help yourself with by learning more about what you're going to do, reading or talking to people in the industry so that you don't feel like it's a big abyss. But it's also transition and change, and that's right. hard for a lot of people. So you worry about your family transitioning, your spouse transitioning. So talking to your family a lot about how you're going to create a structure for them and for yourself so that it won't, so that you can see what the transition will look like will help you to feel less anxious. We also tend to ruminate over the negative right. a lot. Yeah. So making a list for yourself of the positives of going back to work, of which there are many, being a role model for your children in certain kinds of way, having interesting things to discuss with your spouse when you get home. So there are some real positives to be gained. Allison, how do you explain to a, a prospective employer that this whole gap time, that the, the gap in your resume? It's difficult, and what I recommend that people do, if there truly is a gap that they did, they didn't take any leadership roles in their community or anything like that, before they go back, they should do some things to get themselves ready. They like should what? maybe take a course. They can take maybe a computer skills course if they need that, or certain industries you need to update your skills on new regulations or whatever that might be. Those are things you can add to your resume. In addition, contract work. Go work for a friend. It doesn't need to be a, a company that you went and applied for a job, but go do something so that you could show you are ready and able to get back Even into the Even an workforce. internship. Yeah, a lot great. of women are doing work. internships these you know, days. A lot of volunteer work also. I mean, you use a lot of skill sets in, in, those, in those types of work. Now, I understood uh, that you never say part-time when you're looking for the job. You say, I want flex time. I do. We are big on that at MomCorps because part-time has this connotation that you're not there and you're not really willing to give all of yourself to an employer when in fact most moms are willing to work many more hours than what you would think of as a part-time job but they need the ability to do carpool or to just go to the school on occasion when they need to so we talk about flexible time we also talk to companies about finding out what they really need is there a meeting on a Friday somebody has to be at is the rest of the week flexible and then matching up people appropriately but I would think that the the pool of people like Lily would be huge it and is. finding jobs for them I'm sure there are many more people out of work than there are jobs for them there are um, but they're starting to become more especially with the economy the way it is a lot of companies are rethinking how they're bringing people back in. They like to bring people in for a short-term contract or for seasonal needs uh, that in the past maybe they hadn't done. Have, has your confidence grown, Lily? Oh, the absolutely. Past year and a half? Absolutely. Um, you know, just, again, the first step was interviewing, just getting past that and really polishing on that. And uh, the more people that I speak to, the, the better that I get. And... So and you're definitely. sticking with it. Your husband has since gotten a new job. But you oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sticking with it for me. I think it's really important for women to have one foot in the door and uh, keep up the resume. Definitely. And has he, has he pucked up the slack at home? Is he doing some of the chores? Uh, maybe I, have, that's what I, I have, want to know. I have an excellent husband. <laughs> <laughs> she was not going there. <laughs> it's true that it, it can really build self-esteem. 
and, and give you future, you know, one day kids grow up, they Absolutely. leave the home, it can be a great thing. I would say never apologize to your kids for working. Right. That's, it's really important because it implies some guilt like you're doing something wrong. Um, it, it can be a wonderful thing for you and for them. Um, so, you know, when you're going to go start, I would say, you know, you don't need to apologize. You need to talk to them about the pluses and the minuses. Absolutely. Gail, Lily, and Allison, thank you so much. Mom Corps.